Okay, so the next question I felt was really, really good because I have this problem from like wearing wigs and I, I really haven't noticed it from wearing sew-ins, but the question is how to prevent breakage around the edges when wearing a sew-in? Well, I tell any client, the rule of thumb is to leave no more than two inches out. And just because it's out, side of the weave, um, does not mean you do not have to maintain it. You do not have to moisturize it. You have to keep something on. Anything left out is prone to break off, especially your edges because they are the weakest. Yeah, the they're so brittle. Like. Absolutely. So you have to be very careful about how much you leave out and to make sure that you moisturize and keep some type of product on it. It goes back to the foundation of what we keep talking about is to moisturize your hair. And you don't want to put like a lot of tension, like, cause like sometimes like if you braid that, you know, the edges in, that's a lot of tension on your edges. And like we're saying, it's brittle, so it's going to break off. I mean, not that I really know what I'm talking about, but <laughs> yeah, I mean, that sounds like it may be beneficial yeah. for you guys. So, yeah, just make sure you uh, only leave two inches out and make sure that you moisturize it. Okay. So the next question, I feel like this girl was in my head because this happens to me all the time. It says, how to keep a sew-in from getting frizzy. This happens to me often. She did my hair today, which is looking amazing. But usually when I do my hair, it still, it seems to have some frizz to it. Like it looks frizzy. Absolutely. Um, I notice when hair is freshly shampooed. Well, we'll talk about my hair. When I freshly shampoo my hair, especially hair that's lighter in color, mm -hmm. um, it has a tendency, like this area has a tendency to be a little bit frizzy. What I do is put a serum on it, the Argon Oil Serum, very lightly, like a dime size, and run it through. Dry hair has a tendency to be frizzy. So make sure that your hair is not dry, but you don't want to slather your hair with no grease yeah. or no oil. Um, you don't want to do it every single day either. Yeah, because so, my grandma's always like, put some oil shit on. I'm like, no, grandma, I can't no, put no oil shit on this virgin thing. hair. Like, no, you'll look like Crisco head. So Absolutely. definitely don't do that. So basically, so the best thing to keep away freezy hair is like a serum of some yeah, type. some type of serum. Absolutely. Okay. Okay, so the next question is, how do you wrap weave at night? Mine always comes unraveled. Um... Wrap it, period. Um, use bobby pins, clips, hair clips, but and use a lot of them. If you're not wrapping your hair after you wrap your hair, like with a satin bonnet or a wrap cap, um, again, make sure you're bobby pinning it really well, putting a bonnet on. A lot of my clients cannot sleep with bobby um, hair bonnets because they become very sweaty. Mm -hmm. um, so make sure you're sleeping on a, a satin pillowcase, but make sure you're bobby pinning it. And if you have to put 100 bobby pins in your hair, mm -hmm. that's just what you have to do. The bottom of the bobby part, the part with the ridges is down on your scalp because it's going to hold the hair in. But wrap your hair. and Or we, what we do too is pull it up in a high bun and roll it under and um, pin the roll so that it's, you know, curly on the ends. Roll it or flexi rod it. But you guys have asked about flexi rods. You guys asked about a wrap. Okay, so do you, oh, okay. This is going to sound horrible, but I'm just going to keep it real. Because sometimes at night when I, this is so bad. When I get ready to go to bed at night, I'll put on my bonnet, but I don't like brush it or anything. Oh, I just, no. <laughs> I mean, if you can take the time. <laughs> What's the point of putting on a bunny? You didn't even take the time to brush it yeah. or do anything to it. But sometimes I will literally just put on a bunny and get in the bed. And that, you know, it's nighttime. You're tired. As long as I'm pulling out the bonnet, and I know a lot of women do this. As long as I'm putting out the bonnet, I can comb it through. is not really an issue. It's putting the bonnet on. Mm -hmm. Brush it, stroke it, brush it a few times and put it on. It makes a heck of a lot of difference right. if you brush it. And you don't have to do no hundred strokes. Just do a few brushes through. Make sure you're hitting in the crown because that the crown is the thickest and where the hair has a tendency to um, jumble up at because you're laid up on it. So make sure you're just really hitting everything, but make sure you do brush it. Okay, so do you suggest like braiding it or? Oh, like... that would be perfect. Because if... sometimes I'll do like two little pigtails. And Absolutely, braiding. I want you to take the time and do something like that. That's even perfect if you're not wrapping it to braid it. You'll have like a wave pattern. Mm -hmm. um, yes, please, if you can, yes, do that. Because <laughs> it'll keep off of the life of your hair. This hair is expensive. And if you're wanting to wear it over and over again, you want to maintain the wealth in some type of form of fashion. So braiding it is going to be pretty great. Yes. Okay. okay, so the next question is pretty long, so bear with me. What are some cute five to 10 minute hairstyles for those of us who don't have much time to do our hair, but we still want to look cute? I'm a mom of three and I start work at 6 a.m. Woo, 
girl. <laughs> I wouldn't even be worried about my hair, but yeah, I know you're going to look cute. Okay, so I start work at 6 a.m. every day, so I'm always in a rush. Also, what is the proper way to wrap flat iron hair so the front part isn't messed up once I take it down? Thanks. Love you, Nitra. Love you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think great styles are maybe a, a soft braid in the front. A lot of times I will take my hair and do a soft braid and let the back just be be what it is. Mm -hmm. um, also, flexi rod in your hair at night. If you flexi rod your hair at night um, or every few days and put your bonnet on and take it out in the morning, I sometimes sit in the car because I have to be out by seven in the morning. I have three girls who go to almost all separate schools. So I flexi rod my hair at night. This was flexi rod last night. And I got up in the morning in the car on the road as I was dropping <laughs> kids off, taking down flexi rod and pulling it, you know, pulling my hands through. <laughs> Um, you know, a bun, a side bun or a side braid, maybe right here. And you know what I like? I like fishtail. Even though I can't do a fishtail, fish I Absolutely. love fishtail. It's Absolutely. always so cute. And I love how people like do it to the side and then yeah. I like, you know, make it look messy. I Absolutely. always think that that looks really, really cute. And I'm a braid girl. I, I love braids. So I don't, you know, we'll braid it right here and leave the less rest long. Another quick hairstyle is, um, um, these satin, the satin pillowcase rollers, it gives you such a beautiful wave pattern. Mm -hmm. um, those are pretty, and you can sleep on them. They're not hard. They're kind of like the flexi rods, but uh -huh. softer, and they're okay. not hard to sleep on. So don't do nothing in the morning. Do everything at night. <laughs> yeah. and you don't have to do individual little tiny flexi rods or satin pillowcase. You can do eight, nine big ones, and they can be super sexy, super cute in the morning. And you, It looks it doesn't look effortless. It looks like you spent a hundred hours in the right. morning trying to do it, but you know that it's effortless. Right. So, and flat iron? Is that something about flat iron? Um, oh yeah. What is the best way to wrap flat iron hair so my front part isn't all messed up once it's taken down? And when you flat iron hair wrap it, make sure that you put like a wrap scarf on it because what that bonnet would do was push that hair back and make it sit up a little bit. So make sure that you put a wrap cap around it and mm -hmm. lay on it and it shouldn't mess up. Okay. So that, that was a great question. And yes. maybe I can get Monica to teach me how to do a fish braid and I can do a tutorial for you guys. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. They're easy to do. I know. I like watch tutorials and I try Not to easy. learn, but it's like my brain just can't wrap around. <laughs> <laughs> what shampoo and conditioners do you recommend to get the best looking, feeling, and healthy hair? Really great question. I have um, a couple products that I use in the salon. They're professional products, so we won't even discuss professional products. Yeah, let's talk about like more like drugstore. Somebody can Absolutely. go to Walmart, Target, Absolutely. and pick up. Um, Tresemme has a wide range of products that you can use. I love the Organics line. I like that. I just recently started using that, and I really like it. And it smells really good too. Really good. And the Giovanni shampoo. I it's sold at um, Whole Foods. It's an organic product for clients who want to use organic only products mm -hmm. and it's a phenomenon more women use it than I, I knew um it's a great product also so those three lines should get you where you need to be okay and um how often should i shampoo this is totally like off well it's not really off subject it still has to do with shampoo but i don't know if anybody asked this question but i always wondered this how often should i shampoo my hair when i have in a sew-in it depends on the lifestyle. I have clients who work out every single day in their sweaters. They have to shampoo their hair once a week, period. So then I would say once a week, get in there and shampoo it. Sometimes they have to do it more often because they have super oily scalp. Mm -hmm. And so those products, you want to be able to get in there and shampoo that hair. But at least every two weeks, okay. I would recommend. And is there any way that I can properly get to my scalp? Because I know you use the net. Mm -hmm. and So, yeah, she uses a net, and it's this net right here. And a lot of people were asking me when they saw that, you know, you sewing down my hair. They're like, how do you get to your head with this? Um, with this? So, like, what do you suggest? I, um, in the salon, we do the applicator bottle. An applicator bottle is like a color bottle um, that you put the color in. It has a nozzle point. So what I do is take the applicator bottle, put shampoo in there, a therapeutic shampoo for dry and itchy scalp, uh -huh. a moisturizer shampoo or, and or hydrating shampoo, and get in there and poke it in between uh -huh. and let the client sit underneath the dryer with that shampoo on their scalp. If it's therapeutic, it really works. You feel it tingling. If it's hydrating, it just feels great also. But let it sit up on your scalp to get a lot of that to penetrate and then mm -hmm. deeply get in there. I also wanted to mention this to you guys because I just recently got it and it's from Vita Goods. I will have a discount code below, but I haven't tried it, but I wanted to get it because I wanted to actually be able to get to my scalp because what it is, is it pretty much, um, 
it kind of like massages your scalp and like I told you guys my head it itches really really bad when I have in a sew in so I thought with this that it would be able to like get to the scalp and relieve some of the itchiness so is this something that would be beneficial like when having a sew in absolutely what this is gonna do is massage the scalp and it's gonna anything that's massaging the scalp is getting those blood vessels to work it's gonna promote good hair growth so however you can get in there to put that on there um, it's let it massage the scalp and again it's gonna promote the blood moving and flowing and it's gonna promote good hair hair, hair growth okay so yeah um, whenever I try this I will let you guys know how well I like it and I'm also going to be doing a um, giveaway for these because I have like five of them so yeah I'm gonna be giving a giveaway so if you guys are interested um, the link and like the discount code will be below so the next question says I got a perm on my hair my hair gets very knotted um, is there anything that I can do to prevent that and by knotted, I think maybe she means tangled. I'm not sure. Absolutely. I have clients who have cotton soft hair. Cotton soft hair is going to tangle. It's going to be, um, it's going to mesh together, bind together. So put your hair in sections or, you know, take a rat tail, get through it, put it in sections and brush, brush, brush. And make sure you put um, heavy conditioner on it. Brush, brush, brush and put heavy, heavy conditioner on it and sit underneath the dry. But at the end of the day, if, if this is the hair that I'm only assuming that she has, which is cotton soft hair, it, that hair is hard to hold a style and it's, it gets tangly at the new growth very quickly. So make sure you're starting at the base or no, make sure you start at the ends. Excuse, excuse me. Make sure you're starting at the ends and brushing. Okay. Brushing. And also, I don't feel like I have like cotton soft hair. I sometimes like forget to like actually part my hair in like sections and actually brush it and it's like matted in the middle like the crown is the thickest part of your hair and that's i don't want to say that's what you have to really focus on but that should be aside from your edges your main focus but make sure at the crown that you're getting in there and brushing you don't necessarily have to comb it with a fine tooth comb you know stylists use fine tooth comb so make sure you're using a a, a good detangling comb invest into a great detangling comb or a, a tangle teaser or yeah, I think it's called a tangle teaser to get into your crown. And sections. Sections is going to be your best friend. Because yeah. if you try to go from front to back trying to brush that's, or comb your hair. That's what I would do. And I would think I was doing a good job. And You would have hair in the be, brush. And, and no. in the middle, it would be like really matted and, and big. tangly. Because yeah. <laughs> I wasn't getting to the crown of my head. Absolutely. What length of hair do you recommend if I want it to be just above my blue tape? <laughs> You know, I'm 5'7", and Anitra, what, what? I'm huh? like 4'11", 5 foot. So it, it depends on how tall you are. Um, hers kiss, as I say, kiss her ass. <laughs> and you use, what? This is 26. 26. And and like, it, it's pretty bootylicious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's like, if you're like between 4'11", and 5 foot, you should definitely be able to get get away with wearing a 26 inch and it'll be kissing your booty. <laughs> <laughs> and I am 5'7". I don't, mine's is more like five, well, I'm 5'7 and I wear, only wear 24 to 26 inches. So mine's is 26. And to get to my end, it's normally between 28 and 30 inches, but I don't wear hair that long. It That's a lot of hair. No, I, it's not that deep to me. <laughs> I just, I definitely need length. I need at least booby length, but uh -huh. to get to my end, no, no ma'am. Yeah. yeah. To each his own. Okay, so the next question says, I have never had a sew-in before and I would like to try it out. My question is, what type of hair would be good for the fall and winter? Also, would you recommend a beginner to have a closure since I want it to be a protective style? Also, what is the best low-maintenance closure? Okay, it. I, I always say go back to what we first started off with is virgin Indian hair. I think that is the most low-maintenance hair is still very gorgeous. Mm -hmm. um, just get low maintenance, I mean, virgin Indian hair, which is perfect. And closures are perfect for first time wearers. They're a great protective style, especially going into this fall season. Uh, it, you know, as long as you're getting it sewed down properly um, and implementing, you know, making sure that you are tweezing it around the hairline and making sure that you are making it look scalp light, which it can be done or find a professional to do that. There's many YouTubes, there's many Instagrams, but if you're so new to it, find a professional who can help you out to get it done the right way. Because for me, it does not matter how many YouTube videos I watch. I can never duplicate it ever. Yeah. Like I, there's just some people who just, you know, have a tech for certain things and hair is not one of them for me. So yeah, if you, you really don't know how to do it, then I suggest, you know, going to a stylist or a salon or something like that. Absolutely. So there, I mean, 
closures are perfect for a new beginner um first time weave wearers and again the maintenance to you don't if you go in there if the weave lasts is three to four months you can go in there um, every once a month to get that closure readjusted. Mm -hmm. The hair shampooed extremely well. You don't have to go every two weeks. Some clients choose to do that. Once every six weeks, you want the closure to move because that, then that means your hair is growing. And that's what you want at the end of the day to right. promote good health, to promote good um, growth. But again, you can absolutely wear closure as the first time. And there's not one particular type of closure, whatever you, whatever works for you, whatever you think you want to buy. Alrighty, you guys. So that was pretty much all of the questions that we had. We tried to um, minimize them so we didn't have like a lot of the same yeah. questions being asked. But um, we hope you guys enjoyed this video. And hopefully in the near future, we can do more videos together. And maybe she can do like some hair tutorials and all that. So if Thumbs you guys want to see anything <laughs> specific, be sure to leave it in the comment section i just want to thank monica so much for wanting to do this because not only was it helpful for you guys but it was helpful for me because i definitely learned a lot so thank you guys for all of your awesome questions and thank you monica for coming thank I you really for inviting it. me thank no you guys problem. for you know taking me in contacting me emailing me i am always here and available for you i have a flexible schedule so if anybody wants to book, make sure you guys hit my contact information, view my website, and thank you again for um, even considering me to do your hair. Alrighty, and I will talk to you guys in another video. Bye! Bye!